Iraq has developed spray devices that could be used on unmanned aerial vehicles with ranges far beyond what is permitted by the Security Council. A UAV launched from a vessel off the American coast could reach hundreds of miles inland. And we have sources that tell us that Saddam Hussein recently authorized Iraqi field commanders to use chemical weapons. The very weapons the dictator tells the world he does not have. After conferring this morning with the Homeland Security Council, the decision has been made to increase the threat condition designation currently classified at elevated risk to increase that threat condition designation to the high risk category. This decision for an increased threat condition designation is based on specific intelligence received and analyzed by the full intelligence community. The Germans and the French have a proposal, which they talked about again today, which would put United Nations troops in Iraq, triple the number of inspectors, and give inspections a longer time. Could you accept that proposal? The issue is not more inspectors. The issue is compliance on the part of Saddam Hussein. If he complies, if he does what he's supposed to do and tells us where the anthrax went, where did the botulinum toxin go, where did all the missiles go, where is the mustard gas, where, where are all of the documents you've been hiding? If he complies, then that can be done with uh, a handful of inspectors. But if he is not complying, tripling the numbers of inspectors doesn't deal with the issue. As you remember, in 1991, the Persian Gulf War, the Kuwaiti ambassador of the U.S.'s daughter came forward with a fake story. There were suggestions of satellite photos showing 250,000 Iraqi troops on the Saudi border, which the St. Petersburg Times demonstrated was not correct. And now this headline about Britain's intelligence dossier, Britain admits that much of its report on Iraq came from magazines. Are you concerned that there's a sloppiness with evidence and a rush to war? No, I don't think so. I think Britain stands behind its document. Uh, it, they have acknowledged that they uh, use other sources that they didn't uh, acknowledge or attribute. But I think the document stands, uh, stands up well because it describes a pattern of deceit on the part of the Iraqis that is not just a pattern of deceit that exists today, but has existed for many years. In the event that force is used, and after the dust settles and the world press and others can go in and assess the situation, is it your judgment that there will be clearly caches of weapons of mass destruction which will dispel any doubt that the United States and such other nations that joined in the use of force did the right thing at the right time? Sir, I think we will find caches of weapons of mass destruction, absolutely. Is the U.S. military ready to go against Iraq? Yes. Are you planning, are you and your folks planning for a ferocious war, I mean an all-out defense by the Iraqi military? The, the task of war planners is to plan for every conceivable contingency, and they are doing that, from the most pessimistic to the most optimistic. America's interests in security, and America's belief in liberty both lead in the same direction, to a free and peaceful Iraq. A new regime in Iraq would serve as a dramatic and inspiring example of freedom for other nations in the region. America will seize every opportunity in pursuit of peace. And the end of the present regime in Iraq would create such an opportunity. We will make this an age of progress and liberty. Free people will set the course of history, 
and free people will keep the peace of the world. Some of the higher end predictions that we have been hearing recently, such as the notion that it will take several hundred thousand U.S. troops to provide stability in post-Saddam Iraq, are wildly off the mark. These are Arabs, 23 million of the most educated people in the Arab world, who are going to welcome us as liberators. And when that message gets out to the whole Arab world, it is going to be powerful counter to Osama bin Laden. The question is not how much more time should be allowed for inspections. The question is not how many more inspectors should be sent in. The question simply is, has Saddam Hussein made a strategic decision, a political decision, that he will give up these horrible weapons of mass destruction and stop what he's been doing for all these many years? That's the question. There is no other question. Everything else is secondary or tertiary. That's the issue.